Hi, I'm Jill, Chief Safety Officer with Vivid Learning Systems. I'm a former OSHA inspector and I'm here to help you identify and correct workplace hazards. For this series, we are at the beautiful Monterey Bay Aquarium to show you that no matter where you work, safety is for everyone. Ozone is an effective disinfecting agent used in many different types of industries, including water bottling, dairies, food processing, laundry, medical, pharmaceuticals, pools and spas, pulp and paper, the dental industry, wastewater treatment, and aquaculture. Today we're at the Monterey Bay Aquarium and I'm with Chris, our life support, who's a specialist in the life support center. And Chris um, works with ozone every day. And Chris, I'm wondering, could you tell us what is ozone? Well, ozone is a gas that is created, a, a sterilizing gas created by adding a lot of electricity to oxygen, so something around 10,000 volts. When you add that much electricity to oxygen, you cause it to go from being O2 to O3. It'll actually pick up an extra atom and become this molecule of ozone. As a rule, ozone is an unstable molecule. So it will seek to bond with organic compounds in the water. So whatever you're trying to sterilize, for example, it could be bad smell in the air or things are lost in the water, it could be fish oil. Ozone by nature will bond to this. And being a very a powerful sterilizer, it will bond to it and break it apart. So the beauty of it is ozone will then do this job and clarify water or air as is necessary. When ozone is done doing that job, the advantage of ozone is it will turn back into oxygen. It sheds that extra atom and it comes back to plain air, which can then be routed off. Sure. And so how do you use it here at the aquarium? Well, here at the aquarium, we create the ozone inside the building. The ozone then transfers to a special tank where it meets water from our tanks, from, the, from where the animals are actually kept. Uh, in the right amount, when it's added the right amount to that vessel, it will actually get in there and sterilize the water, make it clear and clean. So particularly with things like fish oil to cloud the water, or broken down, dissolved organics like uh, plant matter, things that make water very green or cloudy. Uh, ozone will bond to those things and sterilize them, creating much more clean, clear water. So that's what purpose we use it for here in the aquarium. Okay, primarily. and so what are the hazards associated with ozone? Well, ozone has a lot of advantages, but the hazards are pretty extreme. In the sense that ozone by itself is a very corrosive gas. By nature, what it does is it will bond to organic compounds, could be Air could be parts of your lungs. Mm -hmm. And by doing that job, it breaks those things down and effectively destroys them. Mm -hmm. So if you were to ingest, you know, it's basically inhale ozone, it would then go in and destroy your lung membranes, destroy the membranes, alveoli in your lungs that allow you to breathe. It would replace the oxygen, therefore, in your lungs and destroy you. Eventually, it is fatal. Sure. So it's a dangerous thing. It's, so it's very carefully monitored and added as is necessary. Sure. And so it sounds like maybe you'd have to take precautions for both the environment and for people. So how do you how do you protect the environment and people here at the aquarium? Well, first of all, there are probes again in the system to let us know if ozone has escaped. Okay. But whenever we're dealing with an ozone system, we have to make sure there's no ozone present. Much like if you have an electrical appliance that might still be charged even though it's not plugged in, ozone still exists in places. So as we're working on it, we have to take a lot of cautious steps with testing, personal protective gear, the personal monitors to let us know, air sensors to let us know if it's present before we work on equipment. We wouldn't want ozone to be trapped inside of a pipeline or somewhere in one of these vessels where it can react and, and, and affect us if it was open. So you're wearing so a personal monitoring device? Personal monitoring device is critical when you're working with ozone. Yeah. That's Do you also have to wear a respirator or is that is your monitoring device the, the system that you Typically have? a respirator would only be used if you could not remove this, this the, you know, the ozone from that space. Uh, respirators that are given to general staff that work in energy department are generally considered to be not effective. Sure. You know, self-contained breathing operation is the well, only one that well, works. Yeah. Fire departments, the rescue personnel will be sure. more suited to enter an ozone space you could not vent. Because it displaces the oxygen. Because it displaces the oxygen. Right. It is not something you can easily filter out effectively with anything sure. but carbon. Now here at the aquarium we actually use activated carbon to break it down. Mm -hmm. But it would be difficult to have it on your person to do the same job. Mm -hmm. All about, more importantly, evacuating the space evacuating the air from the space to make sure there's no more ozone present. The probes may go off to tell us there's a problem, but we do not enter a space again until the personal protective equipment we have on, our own personal breathing sensor, will let us know that it's safe. That it's safe to do so. Yeah. And so emergency yeah. planning is really critical. Absolutely for critical. Also, constant system maintenance to make sure that our, that our safety systems, our interlock systems are all working perfectly 100% of the time, not only for us personally, but for the animals as well. 
Because if those systems don't work, you could over-sterilize a system with animals in it and kill them. That would be equally bad for us. And so we're standing behind some tanks that contain we are standing ozone at this. We are actually standing at the system back here whereby we actually inject ozone into the water to do the job. We don't actually inject ozone into the big tanks the way you would assume. We take a certain amount of water from the tanks at a time. That's called a side stream. We divert that down and we ozonate that. And then once that water is clean, we put that water back in the tank. So we're only doing so much at a time because obviously we don't want too much ozone to be present anywhere. Sure. You know, there's another danger associated with ozone is that if left alone inside of certain pipes, it will turn, transform into nitric acid. There's also a burn element with ozone, an extra byproduct, nitric acid being extremely dangerous, that we also have to consider when we deal with ozone. So we're dealing with piping that may have had no ozone in it for quite a long time. It's so as we carefully check to make sure the presence of acid. For a reactive. Okay, reactive acid, very good, yes, indeed. very good. Yes, well, a lot to ozone safety. And Chris, I'm so thankful that you're sharing this with everyone. It's my pleasure. No, it's, it's my it's, pleasure. It's important, it's important work. And hopefully you've taken something away that you can add to your, your safety audits and your safety knowledge when it comes to working with, with ozone. Absolutely. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank mm -hmm. you. I hope you gained a safety skill today. If you know someone who needs this, Go ahead and pass it on. Safety is everyone's business.